and the talk post lunch is little heavy to drag with but just bear with me for half an hour or maybe less than that so the the talk that would be uh, delivering here is is on uh, core channels in wireless basically uh, it, it's about it's about how one can actually ship certain data not in the payload field but some other field and let's begin so we are actually uh, me rishikesh and my co-author amrita somehow she couldn't travel because of a visa issue so we've been we've been uh, trying to understand wireless communications in detail for like almost four years we have been trying to understand many of the questions in wireless communications in, in a different way different approaches so it was actually in nalcon 2014 we have delivered a talk on uh, rogue access point detection from clients perspective that we came to uh, 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 reach another question where we've, uh, we've we've been trying answer like okay there are rogue access points there are different attacks happening in the IEEE 2.11 uh, standard and, and uh, things like that but then is that only detection and prevention is the way to actually solve these all questions or is there something else that we can uh, come up with in order to uh, address certain security issues in IEEE 2.11 well, before we begin, this whole uh, discussion would be going around uh, IEEE 802.11 specific to open wireless networks. We won't be dealing with any uh, uh, encryption or something like that here. So these are open wireless networks, max to max from captive portal that may come in picture. So while answering that particular question, where is there any way around to 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 come up with some new preventive measure apart from like uh, wireless sensors or maybe wireless IDS or something like that what else can be done so we came to know like what if we try to ship certain data into into frames uh, where usually data is not sitting so this is where this whole concept started taking place uh, or rather started incepting I would say so yes Amrita she is a test analyst uh, having more than 10 years of experience I am a security analyst uh, and part-time researcher so that is much on to the introduction part so yes by the time we started solving this question this was our state of mind cluttered there were like plethora of things and number of layers different timing paradigms and whatnot but there are many presumptions as well so like something that's kept from disclosing yes indeed there are always otherwise usages of things that purposely were not mentioned into the standard documentations and so is the wireless the holy dot 11 or maybe IEEE 802.11 so some characters very basics if somebody is not aware access point the device which will actually uh, uh, avail uh, a network connectivity to hosts and hosts are nothing but the stations which would be actually consuming such network connectivity and will be uh, doing some productive or unproductive use of that connectivity so back to the basics introduction I think we've done a little bit so here it is we, we all here sitting uh, at least have some understanding about IEEE 802.11 and the misuse that's always been done about uh, around IEEE 802.11 so what, what do we really need to prove it again and again I, since like 1998 we've been attacking IEEE 802.11 and still is the state of uh, this whole wireless network scenario well okay fine so what what can be a bullet uh, line for this particular blame for that mad we can say a hole in the network perimeter open wireless networks webs bad configs default username passwords and whatnot lose link in the client security yes offensive rogue access points eavesdropping in socially dense areas connectivity mess ups yes when we say connectivity mess ups it would only be known to attacker otherwise it's a seamless experience for rest of the victims so who the victims are 
I know a couple of boring slides these are. Curtsy to omnipresence and e ease of access to wireless, mobile phones, cameras, printers, gaming consoles, laptops, desktops, majority of gadgets nowadays we are using and thanks to IoT, many more things and extended surface to attack. All in all many victims attacking exploitation. So any any uh, or rather majority of uh, uh, IEEE 2.11 uh, complying devices have certain modes of operation. Out of that first is managed mode, that is more of our, our uh, wireless network interface card which usually operates in, ad hoc mode which is kind of a, maybe a patch driver or maybe some edited stack presenting to IEEE 2.11 protocol stack and we are using it for some ad hoc purpose for that matter. Master acts as an access point and monitor mode, one of very favorite mode of an attacker for that matter. Allows monitoring and injecting traffic on various channels, synonymous to promiscuous mode in case of wired network. So covert communications by book. In computer security, a covert channel is a type of computer security attack that creates a capability to transfer information objects between processes that are not supposed to be allowed to communicate by the computer security policy. I know pretty heavy definition. There have always been a ways to basically smuggle uh, your data using various layers in the ISO OSI model. Well, to mention here, actually, uh, one of my paper got declined in positive hack days, but their review was really fantastic. This particular line has actually strike to me after that review. Like why it has only supposed to be a specific layer? Why cannot be there are more than one layer on which we can ship covert data or rather we can initiate covert channel? So yes, thanks to PhD for that. So we've been focusing on some of the aspects in data link layer. This is where we have actually zeroed down on data link layer and we started focusing on yes, this could be the prospective uh, region we can actually explore in order to uh, initiate our covert channel. And that too specifically on beacons and probes, why we would come to know in, in some time. So some basics, dot 11 frame types, management frames, control frames, data frames. Forget about control frames from data frames because we would be only dealing here in this talk about management frames and that too about only these three frames which are highlighted in red. That is probe request, probe re response and beacon frame. So while doing this all, we We've taken help of a particular tool called Scapy. So Scapy is a packet manipulation tool, a program, allows forging and crafting packets and frames, supports various protocols. For Scapy, wireless frames are just a set of layers and sublayers. How? We will come to know soon. So layers in Scapy. So this is how actually Scapy understands our wireless frame. So the first layer in the wireless frame for Scapy is radio tap, then the other layer is dot 11 then the third layer is dot 11 beacon or probe request or response and then succeeding with dot 11 ELT ELT stands for information elements so yeah this was like some some convinced thought of mine after like six months so beacon frame oh seems this is uh, fine we can actually inject these things in more of an OOP way or uh, things like that. So basically it's a radio tap layer as we have said, as, as we have uh, spoken already. Then there is a dot 11 address one, which is like a broadcast address here. Address two is nothing but your BSS ID. Address th three is again a BSS ID. And then dot 11 beacon that actually starts with cap. 
cap equal to 0, x2104, cap is nothing but a field which is usually a capability information, deals with lot of hardware and network related information for that particular network, ex, uh, network interface card and same about wireless access card as well, sorry, uh, wireless access point as well, my apologies for typo. And yes, the, the other thing is like dot 11 ELT, ID equal to 0 here, ID is nothing but uh, a field which, which will be telling you like which kind of information element that you are trying to address here. So in case it is ID is 0, then that particular information element is SSID. So the info field will actually populate that particular uh, information about that ID. So here it is demo, demo, demo. So that is SSID that I have uh, forged here or for that matter showed here. So theoretically this is how beacon frame looks like. A lot of header and bytes related information, timestamp, frame control and many things. In, in functional context, this is what beacon frame does. So assume that particular rolling circle or rather the uh, growing circle is a beacon frame. As soon as it reaches to a particular station, it, it gives that particular station intelligence that yes, there is particular access point present into the local radio periphery. So yes, there's a lot of information stuffs inside the uh, wireless frames in our context, beacon and probe, edit the fields which have better length <coughs> in order to ship data. Yes, that is what we'd be doing and soon we'll be seeing like what exactly uh, is the significance of that particular statement. Interesting elements, SSID, DS set, TIM, rates, ES rates, TPC rates, responses, sorry, TPC requests and responses, country and etc. There are like plethora of such elements available. So to, to sell through certain elements, I have referred to IEEE 802.11 standard document where, where these elements are written. So basically, in, in our uh, KP context, if we see here, the ID field here represents same ID here as well. So the element ID is nothing but the ID field in case of KP dot eleven uh, uh, ELT uh, context. Fine. And the length, if you see, like here we have SSID, it's got like 34 octets, supported rates, 10 octets, uh, TIM. 256 octets, TIM stands for traffic indication map. So like that, there are many such uh, uh, elements available. So couple of them we have picked up and tried understand like if they really work the way we want it to. Can we show with this particular thing, uh, these particular frames because they do not require any authentication, neither they require any association with access point to, to broadcast themselves, to air themselves. Being broadcast, there is no need to zero down on host selection. So this, this would be like kind of a, a broadcast attack, we need not uh, zero down on a specific user, okay, this is what I'm trying, uh, this, this is a particular user I'm trying to attack, no, not needed. We can actually target many people at a time. Uh, so yes, that reduces the a bit. Uh, presence of these frames in multitude in local wireless periphery is a common phenomenon, yes. So by design, these frames are meant to be available in abundance into the ro local radio periphery. So that actually gives us a rather, a, a an attacker, uh, an edge to actually uh, stay low onto suspicion. Yes, so again the multitude will always facilitate the larger chunk of data to ship. Yes, this particular thing, the multitude of larger chunk of data, we still are working on this. But yes, we are able to ship a data, but we are still uh, not being able to sequence it in a proper way because of some uh, lossy channels for that matter. So using this, outbreak of malware, pretty much a possibility. Some field allows pushing more than 250 bytes of data in a single frame. Add it to this particular statement. Now it could be more than like 500 or maybe like 750 bytes of data in the single frame. We will show you, show you how. Fine. 
So 250 bytes are quite enough for malicious payload, yes. Those who are exploit writers here, they, they, they understand uh, importance of 250 bytes. So uh, for representation perspective, we have picked up uh, a particular information element and that is TIM, that is uh, traffic indication map. So why specifically TIM? It is because of, this was the first element, information element, which allowed us shipping 250 bytes of data in some non-payload field. And yes, it was pretty easy to fabricate the frame in SCAPI using this particular information element. Those were like days when I was not much. find a, a way to actually land our shell code and make it executable directly onto the uh, remote box for that matter. So yes, uh, demo. I hope it liner of file line scripts I'll show you the scripts as well they are pretty easy to understand so here
500 bytes of data or like 750 bytes of data in in a one particular frame like we are yet to study rest of the elements uh, or other information elements for that matter which will actually allow us shipping like little larger chunk of data into the same uh, single frame for that matter so you can see the volume has been increased of the string So some issues uh, about this approach, there are certain issues that, that we are still trying to uh, rectify, we can say. So deep packet inspection firewalls will still raise an alarm. If, if they see like there are certain uh, different el uh, information elements which are being populated with some, uh, some suspicious data. Uh, yes, reordering the data at receiver end could be an issue should sequencing is not take a, taken care of before showing in the data. Now the second part of this particular fact is like though we take care of sequence into uh, uh, into the transmitter end, we still are feeling uh, we, we, we still are facing problems by the time we receive the data. There is still a problem with reordering that data because there are certain frames which are getting dropped because of some no noisy channel and all. So that is giving us no clue like how to again reorder this whole chunk of uh, information in a in a in a single line for that matter but yes this particular timing parameter uh, on, on in, in scapy there is particular command send p which actually allows you sending data with specific time uh, timing interval so we can use this particular timing interval in order to ship the data and in sequence but the same problem arrives like how to acknowledge and uh, how to retransmit that data so there is another way that we have been able to actually come up with is like uh, uh, retransmit that whole chunk of data after like 0.2 milliseconds or something like that but that will only result in a lot of garbage at uh, receiver end uh, but yes honestly we are yet to find uh, an exhaustive solution to this particular question as of now so no retrieval of lost frames so far yes so work in progress that just i have told you like there are things we are trying to understand how, how a loss frame can be retrieved. So yes, apart from that, there are many information elements we are yet to test. Fields pertaining timing parameters may be of help, but yet to be tested though. Now why timing parameters would come in picture, specifically like PS poll frames or uh, frames which are more concerned about timing, which are like timing sensitive frames. So they can actually be used in, in order to uh, write in a lot of data in a different way like instead of that particular ID again in timing uh, field we can use some string to be shoved in there or maybe a hexadecimal representative of that string and can ship the data. We are, we are still trying to understand that thing in detail. Uh, yes, synchronized file transfer. This is something uh, we are halfway into. As I have told like, yes, uh, using that particular 0.2 milliseconds delay into the uh, frame burst, we can actually reorder the data. But uh, as I have told like, it's only that uh, lost frames that we are yet to work upon. So conclusion, we have used Broadcast frames as a mean of uh, running covert channels. The approach we have proposed is still in development.
people getting visa and flying was like real dream kind of thing for me but it's just because of him that happened uh vivek ramachandran for his fantastic literature on wireless basic security uh scripting and everything and yes defcon 24 wireless village for giving me an opportunity to share uh, what i have learned with uh, everybody around here thank you so very much uh, if if you have any question i have, I'll, i'll try to answer that there was no effect no effect so you can carry as you're saying you can carry this across a legitimate wireless network can hide your data in the frame and no one will be none the wiser no worry it 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 uh, smoothly escapes the host kernel as well as it gets uh, properly interpreted by the victim kernel as well any other question um, yes yeah. uh honestly i i'm i'm yet to uh, excel into those all mathematical algorithms okay. so is the reason i haven't touched encryption okay. Okay. yes any question any more all right thank you everybody for uh, being such a nice audience and thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, deliver my talk thank you